In the previous video, we discussed about segmentation. Now the next step after segmentation in marketing is selecting the target market or targeting. In this video, we are going to discuss various strategies of targeting. In the previous video, as we discussed that segmentation is a process of dividing the whole market into different subsets so that one subset is having similar kinds of needs and wants. So in this picture, these subsets are having identical needs and wants. After segmenting the market, now the marketer need to know which segment or segments to target because they have to make their marketing mix according to the target market selected. So suppose in this picture, this market they have identified and they have selected this market as their target. So the process of selecting the target market is known as targeting. While selecting the target market, two factors are majorly important. First is overall attractiveness of the segment. Overall attractiveness of the segment is decided by the size of the segment. Then the growth opportunities present in the future. Then the profitability of the segment. Then the scale economies means the large scale operation should be possible so that cost effectiveness could be maintained. Then low, low risk should be there. Then less competition should be there in the segment. All these factors together decide the attractiveness of the segments. Another factor which is important is the objective and resources of the organization. While selecting the target market, one must see the objectives and the limitations in terms of resources of the organization. There are various strategies available in the market. These are single segment concentration, selective segmentation, product specialization, market specialization and full market coverage. Coming to the first one, which is single segment concentration. Now suppose in the whole market, there are three types of customers, M1, M2 and M3. Similarly, three types of product could be manufactured under product category, which are P1, P2 and P3. In single segment concentration, what the company does, they select only a single segment to target. So in this case, suppose the company has chosen that they will manufacture P2 product for M1 type of customers. So in this case, there are certain advantages and certain disadvantages. Advantage is that the firm enjoy operating economy through specializing its operations. Because in this case, they are manufacturing a single product and they have specialized in this particular product. So they will achieve operations of economies through large scale manufacturing. But there is a negative point in this strategy also, which is it involves higher risk than normal risk. Because in this case, diversification is not there and the company has to rely on the single segment. If this segment fails, the whole company will fail. Example of single segment concentration is Volkswagen. Volkswagen is manufacturing small cars for a particular kind of a market. So this strategy has been adopted by Volkswagen company. Now the second strategy is selective specialization. In this case, the company will not select only one segment. They will select two, three segments in different markets and they'll manufacture different kinds of product. By this strategy, the major advantage is that the risk has been diversified. See in this example, now suppose the company has decided to manufacture P1 product into the M2 market, P2 product in M3 market, and P3 product in the M1 market. So by this they have diversified their risk. Suppose one of the segment doesn't work well. In that case there is no risk to the company. The other segments can cover up the risk of the first segment. So this is how this segment can remove the limitations of the first strategy. Coming to the third strategy which is product specialization. In this case the company wants to specialize in a particular product. So for example in this case company wants to specialize in P2 product. So, are they, so they are making P2 product for all types of customers that is M1, M2 and M3. Now taking another example, suppose a company wants to manufacture microscope. Microscope is a single type of a product but they are manufacturing microscopes for all type of customers that is for the university labs, government labs and commercial labs. So in this case they are specializing in a particular product. Fourth strategy is market specialization. In this case the company wants to specialize in a market not in a product. So in this case, they will manufacture all types of product for a single type of a market. So in this example, the company has chosen the market M1 and for M1 market, they will be manufacturing all types of product that is P1, P2 and P3. In our previous example, if we'll take uh, the company suppose chose the university laboratory market or the customers of university laboratory and they will manufacture all kinds of lab instruments for the university labs. So in this case, the market is same, but
but the type of products are different. The last strategy available is full market coverage. For in full market coverage, the company is going to cover the whole market with all segments and with all kinds of customers. So in this case, the very good example is of IBM company. Generally, this strategy is adopted by large scale firms because they have full financial support and capabilities to cover the whole market. In case of IBM, the IBM is covering the whole computer market. They are manufacturing all types of computer products for all types of customers. So in this case, this is full market coverage. In full market coverage, we have two options. First is differentiated marketing and second one is undifferentiated marketing. In differentiated marketing, generally the firm go for differentiated marketing mix for different segments. They'll make different product, they'll keep different prices, they'll promote it differently and they will promote it also differently. Another strategy is undifferentiated marketing. Some companies goes for undifferentiated marketing that is they will manufacture the same product for all types of segments and generally they will keep other marketing mix elements also similar. A few changes could be there only to give the local touch to the product. The very good example of differentiated marketing is Marriott Hotels. Marriott Hotels are operating in all segments to serve the needs of all types of customers. They are working in the economic section, they are working in the middle segment and they are working in the higher segment also. Now comes to the undifferentiated marketing. Very good example of undifferentiated marketing is Coca-Cola. They are manufacturing same product for all the segments. Obviously differentiated marketing is better in today's scenario because every customer has a different need and want. But the limitation is differentiated marketing is costly. Undifferentiated marketing is suitable for only certain type of products. It is not uh, implemented in all products and the advantage is that it is having a low marketing budget or it will cost less to you. So this is all about the uh, targeting or selecting target market. After looking at the concept, now you just recommend a targeting strategy in case of toothpaste. In previous video also we discussed about basis of segmentation for the toothpaste product. Now after segmenting the market, what kind of a strategy would you recommend to select a target market in case the product is toothpaste and also give three reasons for selecting that particular targeting strategy. That's all about today's lecture on targeting. Thank you very much.